Hello and welcome to my channel, This Mama's Faith. It is my prayer today that after you watch this video, you leave feeling inspired by God's word and motivated to serve others. My name is Tabitha Kelly. I am a wife of 10 years, a homeschool mama to six, a joyful homemaker, a lover of coffee and dresses, but most of all, a daughter of Christ. Today I am taking you along while I do some homemaking and share with you what God has laid on my heart this week. I hope you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing. Today I have some homemaking to do around my home, and while I work and talk to you today, I hope this motivates you to get something done in your home. If you're feeling uninspired or unmotivated, why don't you get up and do some of these things with me? The length of this video is perfect for you to wash a sink full of dishes, fold a basket of laundry, or get yourself freshened up for the day. If nothing else, make your bed and listen to what God is telling you through this video. Currently on my channel, I am doing a Proverbs 31 Woman Bible Study where each week we deep dive into another verse of Proverbs 31. We are about halfway through the chapter and I decided this week to make one long video combining the previous videos in this series so we can revisit the topics we've discussed. I know many of you watch these videos while you do your homemaking, so I hope you enjoy this longer video and get some homemaking motivation from it. Thanks so much for subscribing, and let's get to cleaning. Proverbs 31, 10 through 31. I am reading from the New American Standard Revised Edition. Who could find a woman of worth? Far beyond jewels is her value. Her husband trusts her judgment. He does not lack income. She brings him profit, not loss all the days of her life. She seeks out wool and flax and weaves with skillful hands. Like a merchant fleet, she secures her provisions from afar. She rises while it is still night and distributes food to her household, a portion to her maidservants. She picks out a field and acquires it. From her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength. She exerts her arms with vigor. She enjoys the profit from her dealings. Her lamp is never extinguished at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. She is not concerned for her household when it snows. All her charges are doubly clothed. She makes her own coverlets. Fine linen and purple are her clothing. Her husband is prominent at the city gates as he sits with the elders of the land. She makes garments and sells them, and stocks the merchants with belts. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and laughs at the days to come. She opens her mouth in wisdom, kindly instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband too praises her. Many are the women of proven worth, but you have excelled them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Acclaim her for the work of her hands and let her deeds praise her at the city gates. What about Proverbs 31 sticks out to you? What do you think God is calling you to do in your life? This chapter of Proverbs describes a godly, virtuous woman who commands respect and who any man would love to have as a wife. But who is she? The Proverbs 31 woman is certainly no pushover. <laughs> she makes plans and executes them with her family's best interest in mind. She is a woman of excellent character. She's up before sunrise, ensuring her family has plenty of food. She recognizes that she's been blessed. She does not eat the bread of idleness. She's trustworthy to her husband and others. 
and everyone knows she honors her word and goes out of her way to help others. The Bible offers us many role models to learn from and to emulate. Of course, obviously, the most ultimate role model is Christ himself, and we should behave as he would. But as a Christian woman, we can learn a lot from the Proverbs 31 woman. Above all, she is a woman who fears the Lord. And in case you didn't know, she's actually not a real woman. She doesn't exist and likely never has. No one could keep up with the level of work this lady puts in. But this chapter gives us a list of praiseworthy characteristics for us all to strive towards in our everyday lives as homemakers. As we study Proverbs 31 together, let's use what we learn to mold ourselves into hardworking, godly women of strength and dignity. When you think of biblical womanhood, when you think of a godly woman from scripture, most of us will turn our minds to the Proverbs 31 woman. She seems to have it all. She's got it all together. She does a crazy amount of work each day. She works from sunup to sundown and is never lazy. Her husband, her children, they call her blessed. Her husband cherishes her like a treasure or a rare jewel. She seems just like the perfect woman. And sometimes it can be discouraging to think about her. It's easy to try to measure ourselves up against her. And when we do that, we see ourselves as a failure. It's so easy to get discouraged by the Proverbs 31 woman or overwhelmed. But we have to remember that everything in God's word is profitable. It teaches us, it trains us, and it corrects us. And when God shows us what an excellent woman is, it's important that we try to understand her story. I hope that this series will help you to learn from the Proverbs 31 woman rather than get discouraged by her. I hope if you take anything from this series, first and foremost, and primarily, and maybe the only thing you take, is to live a God-centered life. The Proverbs 31 woman can do it all because she fears the Lord. She is the epitome of a wise woman, and we know that you become wise by putting God first in your life. She can encourage us to keep Christ at the center of our lives because at the end of the day, with all the Proverbs 31 woman does and accomplishes, her biggest accomplishment is her relationship with the Lord. Becoming more like the Proverbs 31 woman will never make us righteous. But by the grace of God, through the work of His Spirit, we are able to become more and more like her. A wise person lives for God and His glory. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Proverbs 31:30. Welcome to week two of my Proverbs 31 Bible study, the first week where we really dive into this inspiring chapter of the Bible. The verse we are going to talk about today is Proverbs 31.10. The excellent wife who can find, for her worth is far more than rubies. If we look deep at the Bible and God's purpose for woman, 
We can see that in Genesis, God created woman to be a helper to her husband. So in order to be an excellent wife, like the Proverbs 31 woman, we must be a helper to our husbands. This doesn't mean we should be passive or walked all over. After all, we're not taken from Adam's feet, but from his rib, which shows us that we should always stand by our husband's sides. We can be our husband's helpers in a godly sense and fulfill this role by placing him before ourselves. There are many Bible verses that speak on how to be a godly and excellent woman. There simply isn't any material thing that can compare to the value of a good wife and mother. And there is only one place that we can find the true answers to what makes a woman an excellent wife in God's eyes, and that is in Scripture. Hebrews 13.4 says marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. When it comes to this Bible verse about marriage, it reminds us of the importance of being totally devoted to our husbands. Ephesians 5.33 says, Each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. A man's greatest need is to be respected, and we can do this in so many ways. Simple things like listening without interrupting, to huge things like following his lead on situations that come up in your marriage. Colossians 3.18 says, Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands, as is fitting in the Lord. At some point, I'd like to make an entire video about biblical submission that God calls wives to. I know it can be a touchy subject for many, but like I said, it's not saying that we should be walked all over, but it is a huge way that we can show respect to our husbands and be an excellent wife. 1 Timothy 3.11 says, In the same way, the women are to be worthy of respect, not malicious talkers, but temperate and trustworthy in everything. I think this shows that a great way to be an excellent wife is to not talk bad about your husband, always to honor and respect his reputation, even among your closest friends. There is no reason to gossip or talk negatively about your husband with anyone. If you have a problem with something your husband is doing, the first thing you need to do is turn to God in prayer, and then you need to communicate that with your husband. Titus 2.5 says, Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to too much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, and to be subject to their husbands so that no one will malign the word of God. Titus 2 gives us so much wisdom on how we should act as women and as wives and mothers. There are many more examples in the Bible on how we can be excellent wives godly women and loving, respectful daughters of God. I challenge you this week to discuss with your husband what he thinks an excellent wife is. Because beyond scripture, you can find so many ideas on what other people think an excellent wife is. Someone on Instagram might think that cooking sourdough bread makes you an excellent wife. You might find a YouTube video of somebody who thinks that keeping a perfectly clean house is an excellent wife. But the only two opinions that matter on how to be an excellent wife is God's opinion and your husband's.
Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 5. We live in a world where many women lie, cheat, and manipulate. They are disrespectful, loud, and immodest. Their immorality is praised as good, and their lack of respect for themselves and others is evident. What comes to mind when you think of a worthy woman? Maybe you think of a family member, your mother, or grandmother, or maybe a friend who has a high-paying job. Maybe it's someone you see on social media who looks like she has a perfect life with a loving husband and lots of beautiful children. Being worthy has nothing to do with how attractive you are, how much money you make, how clean your house is, or how well you cook. It doesn't have anything to do with how fancy your car is, how many kids you have, or how organized your home is but it has everything to do with knowing your worth comes from your creator. Knowing your life has value and meaning through God and that you are placed on this earth at such a time as this. You simply cannot equate your value from what other people think of you, but only by what God thinks of you. Your status doesn't matter. Not your Instagram followers, your likes on Facebook, or your views on YouTube. You don't have to be some prestigious lawyer to be worthy. Yes, we do need good Christian lawyers and doctors and Christian politicians and Christian celebrities, but most often, good Christians are humble and simple people doing simple things. God sees value in that. So if you are a simple person with a regular life, you can still make a profound difference in the world through the eyes of God. By doing your day-to-day -day chores without grumbling, the cooking, the cleaning, the bathing of the kids, all for the glory of God, you will help to advance his kingdom. To raise your children up in the Lord is a high calling. It is worthy. And as the Proverbs 31 woman shows us, it is worth even more than fine jewels. Knowing your worth is found in God is a fantastic way to live. It takes the pressure off, so to speak, and it helps you to realize that when you have a bad day, it doesn't mean that you have a bad life. Living in the worth given to us by Jesus' death on the cross is an amazing way to live, and it should also inspire us to be great and to always try our best so that we are honoring God in all we do. Simply put, a worthy woman is seeking God always. She has an understanding of who God is and longs to be in his presence. She knows her identity in Christ and she is always aligned with God's will and purpose for her life. So ask yourself, are you always seeking God and longing to be in his presence? Do you make your decisions based on God's will and purpose for your life? The excellent wife who can find for her worth is far more than rubies. Welcome to week three of our Proverbs 31 Bible study. This week we'll be talking about Proverbs 31 11. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. Today we are talking about how we can become a trustworthy wife. Ask yourself, does your husband trust you? 
Do you find him confiding in you, sharing his deepest thoughts with you? If you feel like you could improve upon this, I hope this video truly blesses you and that you can work towards becoming a trustworthy wife. The first way that you can become a trustworthy wife is by looking to God first. Having your heart set on God, set on things above, and seeking your fulfillment from Him is going to be the way that you can ultimately become a trustworthy wife. A woman whose security is in God doesn't look toward their husband to fulfill her nor does she look to him to meet her needs. She's learned to trust in the Lord. She's learned to look to the Lord to meet her needs. Because the truth is, no man can fulfill the needs of a woman. No man has that capacity. We are living in a fallen world. Some husbands are godly, good men, and they seek the will of God and seek to be good Christian husbands and he will try to fulfill a wife's need but she shouldn't expect that she should look to the Lord not live in expectation when you are secure in the Lord what will happen is that you see anything that your husband does for you as a true blessing and a privilege and you will appreciate it even more when you have no expectation, you will find your satisfaction in the Lord. He is the one that gives you joy. It's not a husband you're looking to to find joy. Many women will complain that your husband doesn't do this or that, doesn't meet your needs, doesn't fulfill your desires, doesn't make you happy. When you know the truth that God needs to fulfill you, that God is the one who meets your needs, then you will be happy with even the little that your husband does because it's him who is the one who knows you fully. A trustworthy woman will make room for her husband to lead. Many women are highly capable and may even think that they could do a better job than their husband to lead the family. But that is not how God has ordered the world. God's will for marriage is for the man to leave, not because he qualifies necessarily. Maybe you would do a better job in certain instances, but because God said it is so, whether your husband is a good leader or not, it is the will of God for him to lead. So the trustworthy Proverbs 31 woman is the kind of woman that however much she knows that she is gifted in certain areas or that she can multitask or that she is better at such and such, she makes room for her husband to lead and she allows her husband to lead. This will give your husband confidence in his leadership and it will make him grow in it. Knowing that God has ordained your husband to be the man that leads you, that alone is worth your following him. A husband requires respect. This is a biblical principle. This isn't anybody's opinion. Husbands need respect. A wise, trustworthy woman has learned to never disrespect her husband, never to yell at him, never to badmouth him, especially in public, to always guard his reputation no matter what, especially in front of her children or her friends. A trustworthy woman will not make fun of her husband, just as we want to be loved tenderly by our husbands, the same way our husbands need our respect. We need that love and they need that respect. We need to act respectfully towards our husband, talk respectively towards him. It doesn't mean that we're going to be walked all over, 
but just think of it as acting Christ-like. When you respect your man whom God has chosen to be your husband, to be your leader, and to be the head of your family, that alone is glorifying God. A trustworthy woman always tries her best. She gives her all to her marriage. In this day and age, many women are working women. And as such, they think that they should divide everything 50-50. You know, they're making an income, so why should they have to do all the chores? Why should they have to cook all the meals? So they feel like they might need to divide those things up 50-50. But that is not the will of God. The will of God says to give 100% in your marriage, to give it your all, to try your very best in everything you do, to glorify and honor God. God doesn't want you to give him 50%, so why would you want to give your husband 50%? God says in marriage, one plus one equals one. The man will leave his father and mother to be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. The mathematics of God adds up in different ways, especially in regard to marriage. We must bring 100%, and the husband must bring 100%, and that equals 100% in a marriage. A trustworthy woman will listen to their husband. A trustworthy wife listens to her husband. Women tend to talk a lot. And a lot of times we may interrupt our husbands, cut them short, or do most of the talking. I say that because I am guilty of it too. A trustworthy woman will choose to listen to her husband to give him all of her attention, to put down her phone when he's talking to her, to look into his eyes and listen intently. Men have many ideas and many amazing things that go on in their heads. It's important for us to listen and to not shut down these ideas right away. If you are constantly shutting down what your husband is telling you, he's not going to choose to confide in you. Men will think, if I tell her, she's just going to ridicule me, she's just going to brush off what I'm saying, so I'm not going to even tell her. And maybe they'll go to somebody else to tell them. When you're able to listen and really take in what your husband is saying and have a positive input when it's your turn to speak, your husband is going to trust you much more with his deep thoughts. If you trust in the Lord to listen to you, it is the will of God that we would listen through until we get to the heart of our husbands. A trustworthy woman is hospitable. A trustworthy woman is gentle. A trustworthy woman is vulnerable in the arms of her husband. A trustworthy woman is kind. A trustworthy woman is consistent. She shows compassion, humility. She respects boundaries. She can compromise. She's relaxed. 
She's on time. She's grateful. She's not materialistic. She doesn't gossip. She has integrity. She's loyal. She's compassionate. Empathetic. Trustworthy women maintain consistency with what they say and what they do. They're the same at work, at home, and everywhere else. They place their trust in God and always seek to glorify Him. Welcome to week four of our Proverbs 31 Bible study. This week, we're talking about Proverbs 31, 12 through 14. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She looks for wool and flax and works with her hands in delight. She is like merchant ships. She brings food from afar. Proverbs 31, 12 is a simple verse, but it stretches the length of your entire life. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. It requires a lifetime of your action. At the very core, this verse says that we must do our husband's good. Actively doing things that bring him good and nothing to harm him all the days of our lives. Not his life, not the kids' lives, but her life. It means that we are to bring our husbands good by what we do, say, and even think till death do us part. This requires consistent action. The next verse is what we can do to accomplish that. It, we can see that the Proverbs 31 is constantly doing things that are good. She's actively working with willing hands. She's bringing food from afar. And she, most importantly, fears the Lord. We can do our husbands good by speaking kindly to them, by working diligently, by thinking positively about them. It's a tiring task to constantly be kind and loving, and sometimes life's challenges make you feel down and like the last thing you want to do is love someone maybe they've made mistakes or have hurt you but what we can always remember is to turn to god and ask him for strength to do this command to love our husbands and bring them good Proverbs 31.13 gives us an encouraging example of how to view work. There are times when work can feel daunting, whether you go to an office job or you have some sort of job with lots of manual labor, or maybe you're a stay-at-home mom and the mundane tasks day after day are draining to you. It can be hard to continue to view work as good but it's important to know that God has designed work to be good. I think by working willingly, even if we're struggling with being tired or overwhelmed or lazy, can lead to many blessings from God in our lives. Wool and flax were readily available in biblical times and they were, meet, they were used to meet the needs of people, to buy clothes, sheets, blankets, and because these items were readily available, the Proverbs 31 woman, she could have sent somebody else out to get them for her, but instead she shows herself having a willing heart to work by seeking them herself. She's showing that she can help provide for her household. 
she's willing to spend the time, the resources, and the energy to make sure that her family's needs are met. Once she's found her supplies, she starts working willingly. She doesn't complain, she doesn't put it off until it's late, and she doesn't make everyone else do all her work. She, her heart is inclined to willingly work. She found her items to work with, and she's eagerly worked to turn it into something that will fulfill a need in her home. We can apply this to our lives today. Maybe we don't like cooking. Maybe it's such a chore for us to meal plan and grocery shop and make a home cooked meal. Maybe we just hate the whole entire process. But once you're married and you're a wife and a mother, cooking healthy meals and having a good meal plan and budget for groceries is a very important skill to have and we should willingly do this task of cooking meals every single day because this is going to nourish our family, it's going to provide for their needs, it's going to save money in the long run and it's going to glorify God to do something that we don't necessarily want to do but we know we should be doing it. This verse is a great example and a wonderful reminder that we ourselves need to work willingly in our hearts and in our actions. No matter how we're feeling, if we're annoyed, we're feeling overwhelmed, we're tired, working is not a bad thing. God created it to be good, good for us, those around us, and for our relationship with Him. Work prompts us to give Him glory as we see the results of His provisions before, during, and after the work. So for us to willingly work means that we're truly seeing God's intended plan for us, to grow more and more like Him, being a woman after God's own heart. So what are some ways that we can willingly work to glorify God? Number one is to go to the Lord in prayer. Ask Him to give you strength. Ask Him to change your heart to be willing to work and to be grateful for the work you've been given. There is so much power in prayer and God wants to answer those desires. Another amazing tool is a pen and a paper. Write a list. This will keep you occupied, especially if you're feeling lazy, if you're feeling overwhelmed. You'll be able to get all of the tasks that you have to do out of your head and onto paper so that you can stay organized and get more done. You'll be able to prioritize things in your life and not have to try to do everything. God gave us 24 hours in the day for a reason. He knows you have a lot to do. Be wise with how you use your time. Finding time in the day to quiet your mind and rest and spending time with God is a great way to re-energize yourself. Take time every day to breathe, to calm down, to rest, to talk to the Lord, to read your Bible, to eat healthy whole food, and this will help you when you're actually doing your work, to know that you have a time set aside for rest. Proverbs 31, 14 just reiterates the fact that this Proverbs 31 woman is willing to do whatever it takes to provide what her family needs. She is like merchant ships. She brings food from afar. A godly woman is like a merchant ship. She is diligent in providing her family and others in need, even if it requires a difficult journey to do so. She knows that bringing the very best of herself and of what her family needs is often a hard task, but she desires to do it anyways. 
This isn't literally suggesting that she's walked hundreds of miles to find food, but it does suggest that she's hardworking, she's practical, she's a planner, she's using her money wisely. She's not only taking care of her family, but she provides for them as well. She works willingly. So today, be inspired and encouraged that God left us practical, clear examples of what it means to live a life after his heart. We are not alone in this. God is the one forming his character in us. As we take even the smallest of steps towards living in a way that pleases God, he smiles, he's happy with us. He gives us so much grace and love through this process. The most important part of these verses is remembering that God himself is at work in us. He is using the Holy Spirit to convict us and shape us and make us more like him. This is week 5 of our Proverbs 31 Bible study. Today we will be discussing Proverbs 31 15. She rises while it is yet night and prepares food for her household and a day's portion for her maidens. This Bible verse makes it clear that the Proverbs 31 woman wakes up early before her family to plan and prepare for her day. For many women, including myself, this is no easy task. Many of us still have babies waking in the night and just thinking about waking up early gives us a feeling of utter exhaustion. But it's so important for us to look to God's word as a guide on how to live our lives and to be careful not to make excuses for ourselves. We can see in the Bible so many examples of people who rose early. Abraham rose early to check on the destruction of Sodom, to send away Hagar, and to answer God's call to Moriah with his only son. God told Moses to ride early to present himself before Pharaoh. Later, he would rise early to inaugurate the covenant between God and his people. Joshua rose early to cross the Jordan, to take Jericho, and to claim the victory after a defeat. Gideon rose early to pursue the army of Midian, and Samuel rose early to confront Saul. So also young David rose early to visit his brothers in the battlefield where he would face Goliath. Jehoshaphat, Hezekiah, Ezra, Mary Magdalene, and even Christ himself rose early, as Mark 1.35 says, Rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. All of these examples show us that when you have a great need, or a great calling, you rise early to meet it. Verse after verse warns us to avoid laziness and idleness. Proverbs 20, 13 says, Love not sleep lest you come to poverty. Open your eyes and you will have plenty of bread. Proverbs 19, 15 says, Slothfulness cast into a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. Proverbs 6, 9 through 11. How long will you lie there, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber, and want like an armed man. We can relate these many verses and amazing people of the Bible, including our Lord, to the Proverbs 31 woman in Proverbs 31, 15. She rises while it is yet night and prepares food for her household, in a day's portion to her maidens. God is showing us that we need to be women who work hard and are diligent in life. 
It doesn't mean we have to lose sleep in order to accomplish this. God, after all, has designed us to need rest and has provided us time to do so. But so often, that rest is something we abuse. We skip doing the dishes or neglect the laundry pile to instead scroll Instagram or watch Netflix. Being lazy is tempting and easy to do, but its consequences are many. So what can we get from studying the Proverbs 31 woman in this way? First, she isn't idle. She's choosing to not sleep in, but instead take care of the needs of her household. She understands there is great wisdom in being diligent and taking care of what God has given her, rather than staying in bed all day. Secondly, as wives, we have been trusted by our husbands, our children, and God to take care of our households. If we seek to fear the Lord, our heart should desire to take care of what has been entrusted to us well. Third, we see that the Proverbs 31 woman is prepared. She's not facing her day all willy-nilly and just seeing what the day brings. She's getting up early and preparing. She's not scrounging for food for her kids to eat something on the fly. She's not last minute rushing around out of lack of care for her house. She's establishing her plans early in the morning. I've heard many women excuse this verse and write it off because we are living in modern times and we don't have servants or maidens. But I like to think of our maidens as the washing machine, the dishwasher, the grocery store, the vacuum cleaner, the mop and the bread machine. We have so many modern conveniences that immensely help us in our roles as homemakers. Planning to use these things throughout our days and our week is part of being prepared. Planning for how we can teach and train our children in helping with household chores is part of our jobs as mothers. By now, it's clear that not only the Proverbs 31 woman, but many godly people of the Bible rose early to prepare and face the challenges of their day. So how can we actually do this? I want to give you some practical ideas for what helps me to rise early. First, prepare the night before. Whether you set up the coffee pot, set out your breakfast dishes, put out your Bible and journal, lay out your clothes, or all of the above, a good morning routine starts the night before. Making sure my kitchen is clean and reset and going to bed at a decent hour is key to waking up early. Second, set your alarm out of arm's reach. Many of us use our phones as an alarm clock. I do this, but rather than keeping it on my nightstand, I plug it in in my bathroom, so I have to physically get out of bed to turn it off. Thirdly, immediately do something to wake yourself up. As I'm walking into the bathroom to turn off the alarm, I switch on the light. Having a bright light in my face is sure to wake me up. Then right next to my phone on the bathroom counter, I set out a glass of water and my toothbrush. Drinking 8 to 12 ounces of water immediately gets my body awake pretty quickly. I will also brush my teeth right away. The act of doing this, along with the minty fresh feeling, gets me awake. Splashing water in your face or jumping in the shower can also do the trick. Next, I make my bed. When I leave the bathroom, I immediately make my bed. That way I'm not tempted to crawl back in. It takes two minutes and it makes a huge difference on how my room feels and I hardly feel like I've accomplished something for that day. Next, I do something that I enjoy. Something that motivates me to get out of bed. I don't plan to immediately wake up and work out since that's not something I particularly enjoy doing. Instead, I plan something that lifts my spirit and that I enjoy. For me, it's getting a cup of coffee and sitting down with my Bible and devotionals. What you do first thing in the morning says a lot about your true priorities. If your priority is to glorify God in your life, then what better way than to have His voice be the first that we hear each day? At this point, I'm up. My spirit has been filled with God's word and I'm ready to plan for my day and prepare breakfast for my family with a cheerful heart. There's nothing worse than your little one coming next to your bedside, waking you up with the demands of changing diapers and cooking breakfast when you haven't even opened your eyes yet. Be prepared like the Proverbs 31 woman and be ready to greet your family with a smile.
You know where God has called you to work for him. You know how you need to be diligent to take care of what he's given you in your life. It's okay to need rest. It's okay to sleep in every once in a while. It's okay to stop and get takeout for dinner some nights. It's okay to receive help from your husband, your mom, and your friends. It's okay to sit on the couch after a long day. We aren't perfect, but we can be Proverbs 31 women who work hard in obedience to the Lord and obey his example to wake up early to serve him by serving others. I want to thank you for watching this video today, and if it's blessed you in some way, I'd love for you to share your thoughts with me in the comments. Come back every Sunday at 10 a.m. for more traditional Christian homemaking. Subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't forget. God bless you, and remember to glorify God in your simple everyday.